Hello, I'm Matt Galloway, and this is The Current Podcast. Yeesh. That's the sound of the great southern brood. Back in 2011, hissing cicadas emerged, coating swaths of the United States like the creepiest of carpets. And now these clicking beasts are back, this time joined by the northern Illinois brood. It is the first time the cohorts of cicadas have teamed up since 1803. Together, there'll be about a trillion of them. Sammy Ramsey is a professor of entomology at the University of Colorado, Boulder. Sammy, hello. Hello, hello. There are many people who have heard a cicada, perhaps never seen one before. What does a cicada look like for those who have not had the pleasure? <laughs> uh, I think it's an experience that everybody should have to see a cicada close up. So if you get a chance, definitely do so. They are gorgeous insects. They have a black body, bright orange wings, bright red eyes. They're very colorful and ostentatious creatures. They're the sound of the summer in many ways, right? Oh, yeah. They are the sound of the summer. We think of a lot of pop songs as the sound of the summer, typically. But I think we need to listen to the symphony that they provide and think of that as the sound of the summer. And so this symphony will be especially loud in parts of the United States this summer. Why are we seeing this double brood of cicadas? We're seeing this double brood of cicadas because, well, cicadas are kind of odd in a really clever way. They've decided that instead of investing a bunch of energy in weapons that they can use against other creatures, stingers and fangs and so on, their method of defending themselves will be to show up on a schedule that no other creature can adjust to. And so some cicadas show up every 17 years, some show up every 13 years, and 13 times 17, you get this very odd... Um, situation here where two of the cicada broods have actually synced up together. 13 times 17 is 221. It's been 221 years since the last time this occurred. Why like 13 and 17? Like, why do these bugs stay underground so long? What's going on there? Well, if you think about it, if you're a creature that wants to be a specialist, you want to only eat cicadas, you would have to wait 17 years to see another brood of cicadas. It doesn't allow for an organism to sync up and become a specialist predator in cicadas. So they don't have any specialists, but they do have quite a few generalists. Pretty much anything will eat a cicada. But because they have decided to all come out at the same time, they come out in such huge numbers that nothing could possibly eat all of them. So they don't even pay attention to predators. Creatures try to eat them and they just walk right by them. How do they all know to come out at the same time? I wish that we knew all of the details involved because my goodness, are they incredibly well synced. I mean, the fact that all of these creatures, a trillion plus, know to emerge at the exact same time is a marvel of science. It sounds, now, like, a know it sounds the... like a horror movie to some people, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What, why specifically a horror movie, if I might ask? Because I mean, all these bugs sounds... are going to come out of like a trillion bugs coming out of the ground. It sounds like, like I couldn't even dream that up uh, if I was writing a movie. You know, it, it reminds me of uh, some of the, the plagues in the Bible of just millions of, of bugs descending on people. So I do kind of get it. Mm. But I really wish that cicadas had better PR. Insects <laughs> in general, I really wish they had better PR because this could be something Thing that people think of as magical. I mean, the fact that all of these creatures have figured out together when to emerge at the same time, it's something that we're even studying um, so that we can better understand for our own systems and computers and networks, how we can better help them sync up together. We can learn a thing or two from the cicadas. Now, it seems like they're sampling uh, some of the nutrients from trees that cycle on a yearly basis, mm. such that they can tell that a year has ended, a, another year has started. And through this system of cycling, they can count to the number 17 and know that it's time for them to emerge. But when it actually gets to the 17th year, they all want to come out of the ground at the same time, not at varying months over the course of the same year. So then at that point, they wait until the ground temperature reaches specifically 64 degrees. And at that time, they all emerge together. That's amazing. So at 64 degrees, what does it look like when they all emerge together? Oh, it is incredible. I, I actually, uh, during the, the great emergence of, um, of, of Brood 10 in Maryland, I actually went out 
the night that they started emerging and found them. I mean, it was almost ghostly and ethereal. They climb out of the ground very slowly as these brown, nondescript insects, and they have to shed their skin. And as they shed their skin, this ghostly white organism pops out slowly and then climbs into the trees. And you see this happen slowly at first, maybe two or three around you. But after an hour, you are surrounded by all of these brown bugs that have climbed out of the ground, and they have this white little ghost popping out of the back of them. Back to the horror movie thing. Um, what does it sound yeah, like? Yeah. I mean, we know what they, what, that that's what it looks like. And we, we know what a cicada sounds like. What is it, you know, when there is a trillion coming out, what does that sound like, do you think? <laughs> so when there are a trillion of them coming out, it really does sound like there is a spaceship landing. There is this, uh, have you ever heard of Tuvan throat singing? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's this you really kind of feel, fascinating you, you, thing. You sort of feel it more than hear it. Exactly. Precisely. And, and it's because the, the resonance, the way that the resonance syncs up, it allows you to basically create a chord. There's there's more than one note happening at the same time. And so it's this noise Very nice. that just resonates through the trees. And what's really fascinating about it is the cicadas want it to be as loud as possible. Evolutionarily, they are primed to have it be as loud as possible because that's what the females are going to be attracted to. So the boys will all get together uh, in the same tree and try to make as much noise as possible. And if they realize that another tree is louder, they'll head over with those males and try to amplify that sound so that they can attract as many females as possible. Now, I'm pleased that you made that noise because it allows us to play something else that you have made. You recorded a song about (laughs) cicadas a few years ago. I have questions I about this, but this is the song is called Big Red Eyes. Have a listen. Accurate. I'm climbing a tree. I'm shedding my skin. Cause for 17 years, you're the only one I've been imagining. They tell me there's plenty of cicadas in the tree. But baby girl, you're the only one, the only one for me. Sammy, that's not bad. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? Why would you record a song about cicadas? <laughs> you know, normally when you're asked, why would you do such a thing? It, it sounds like there's something negative going There's on. There's nothing but... wrong with that at all. It's just a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I noticed that when people heard what they were hearing in the trees in 2021, they thought of it as a problem. They thought of it as something really annoying. And it just seemed to their minds that the cicadas were doing something nefarious. They wanted to annoy them. But what I wish that they could hear was that the cicadas were singing a love song, a beautiful, beautiful melody that in and of itself was uh, kind of a their way of saying that they wanted to finally find somebody that mm they could actually interact with. They'd been underground for 17 years. They'd never seen another cicada before. And all they wanted to do was spend their time connecting with other cicadas. And so I thought that it would help people if I could translate the song for them, if I could help them understand what a cicada is saying when it's screaming in a tree. I mean, it is the the, the subject of a slow jam in many ways, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, you, that's the reason why I gave you that, that deep R&B, a... Uh, Baby girl, I just want you to know. It, it felt very relevant. <laughs> so, so when they come out, um, and it, you mentioned this earlier, like at scale, it's hard for their predators to kind of deal with this. But will there be things that will try and gobble them up as, as they emerge from the ground? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Everything will try to gobble them up. And this is the point where I provide a public service announcement to anyone who happens to be in the area where this cicada rave will occur. Mm. Um, it's going to be a beautiful thing for you to observe, but keep an eye on your children, keep an eye on your dogs and your cats, because they will try to eat cicadas and it can give them a bit of a stomach ache to eat too many of them. Um, Dogs have been known to eat so many of them that they begin to choke, especially Mm -hmm. smaller dogs. Um, but the cicadas, because they are so unable to defend themselves, everything wants to try to have a cicada snack is going to lead to populations of raccoons and squirrels and birds being able to produce substantially more offspring than they would be able to normally because they've got such an easy set of food available to them. 
Can we eat them? I'd read a thing in the New York Times yesterday saying that you know, like recipes with with kimchi and comparing them to oh, lobster yes. and shrimp and things like that. Oh, yes. You can absolutely eat them. Mm. There are a number of different recipes for cicadas. There are even cicada chefs out there who will teach you how to eat cicadas. I mean, it's 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 pretty remarkable. They are sometimes referred to as tree shrimp. Um, I have had some before, and I take exception to that particular <laughs> rendering. They are not shrimp-like in their texture or taste. Uh, much more earthy, kind of with some notes of maybe almond or pistachio in there. Earthy because they spent 17 years underground. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. You guys should check out the chef, Joseph Yoon. Uh, he has some remarkable recipes for cicadas. So if you're ever particularly hungry and have a hankering for a, a, a tree bug, uh, he'll he'll help you make a, a delicious meal of it. All right, so we're going to play more of your song in just a moment. I got to let you okay. go, but you are you're going to head to Illinois to see these cicadas come out of the ground. This is like I was trying to figure out what the comparison would be for soccer fans. It's like the World Cup for football fans. This is the Super Bowl. This is a big deal for you. Yes, absolutely. This is the Super Bowl for entomologists. I mean, I, I have the opportunity to be serenaded by a group of insects. But this is going to be a different symphony than has ever been heard before, or at least has been heard in the last 200 years, and I have to be a part of that. Enjoy. I'm really glad to have had the chance to talk to you and heard you sing and vocalize as well. <laughs> Sammy, thank you very much. Thank you. Sammy Ramsey is a professor of entomology at the University of Colorado Boulder.